Eric Darling here with Darling Data, and fortunately, uh, I remember to turn my microphone on at the beginning of this video, so uh, I, I, I don't have to do 15 more takes of this. That's nice. Uh, in this, uh, this video, I think the next three videos, we're going to be talking about, uh, I mean, still indexing SQL Server queries for performance, but there are, there are three things that I want to talk about when it comes to indexed views. Uh, indexed view maintenance, uh, how you can use indexed views as com like um, as sort of filtered indexes uh, where you can't normally create filtered indexes. And um, what was the other one? Uh, fixing um, what would normally be uh, sort of a non-sargable predicate or um, making aggre aggregate queries faster, specifically when like you have a big query that has like a having clause on it. So, uh, one thing that we're going to have to talk about right at the like outset of this, though, we're going to like when after we get to the the after we get through the slide part of this, is all the sort of restrictions and things you can't do with indexed views because there are a lot of them in SQL Server, and they are depressing and painful. So uh, we already covered this one, so I, I forgot to click, or maybe I don't know, maybe I clicked and, and nothing happened. It's hard to tell sometimes. <laughs> We live in a world of mystery, don't we? Uh, but if, if you want to support the work that I do uh, creating content for this channel, uh, you can click the little link in the video description right down in here somewhere, thereabouts. Mm, sorry, my finger disappeared. If you know me, that happens a lot. Uh, and you can uh, become a member of the channel for as little as $4 a month. These fingers don't disappear, do they? Uh, it, if you don't have 4 bucks a month to, to spare uh, for whatever reason, maybe you spent it all on spare ribs, uh, liking, commenting, subscribing, all fantastic endeavors that you can embark upon in your, in your daily life to keep me company on the internet. Um, if, if the like, stuff that I'm talking about say it gets into your head and you're like, man, I'm, I'm having these problems with my SQL server. Uh, maybe hiring Eric Darling, he, maybe he can fix these problems with my SQL server in exchange for money. And yes, I can. I can do that. Everything that you see me do here, I, I can do in, on your server. It's not just this server that these things work on. It's not just this magical microcosm of, of SQL Server where I can solve these little little problems and, and thing, things get better. No, no, I can I, I can I can do this on your servers too, e even even if they're in Microsoft's cloud, which is just notoriously awful. So all sorts of things that can be done here. Uh, and as always, my rates are reasonable. If you would like some fantastic SQL Server training, I have it. No one else does. To be honest, I've seen everyone else's. Mediocre at best. Uh, you can get all 24 hours of my training for 150 USD. It's a much better bargain than you're going to find anywhere else on the internet. Uh, unless you pirate these, and then there's nothing I can do. Uh, but you, if you go to the link up there and you use the, uh, the discount code there, you can get all of it. And uh, there's no subscription. It's just yours forever. It's like when you used to buy a CD or a DVD. You just, you just had it. You didn't have to like pay 10 bucks a month to keep listening or watching. <laughs> Funny, I guess. Uh, upcoming events for 2025. Again, you, you will know as soon as I'm allowed to tell you. Uh, but with that out of the way, let's talk a little bit about these here indexed view things. So uh, like, I, like I said, the first thing we have to talk about is uh, some of the stuff that like preempts uh, in using index views. Um, so really? See, I didn't notice this when I first cracked this open, but uh, apparently Microsoft is now advertising on their learn page. <laughs> That's cheesy. Uh, who would do that? All right. Uh, kind of weenie. What kind of weenie advertises on their website? But uh, the, if you're going to um, uh, create index views, this actually goes for filtered indexes as well. Uh, and computed columns, and you expect your queries to use them uh, off the like without um, any sort of interference or without throwing errors. Uh, you do need to follow these set options: so anti nulls, anti padding, anti warnings, erythabort, concat null, yields null, and quoted identifier all need to be set to on. Right? This is all says on, and then of course numeric round abort. This weirdo uh, that has to be set to off. So that's probably the easy part. 
And I say probably because um, there, there was one time when I, I was like, I'm going to create a filtered index. It's going to be dope. And uh, this, this cold fusion application, which uses like the weirdest driver to talk to SQL Server, uh, just started throwing errors everywhere. And I had to get rid of the filter on the index. And uh, that, was, that was a funny day. But hey, um, you, live in, you, you live and you learn sometimes. You know? uh, mistakes from year, years past uh, turn us into better people, right? We, we don't experience any pain. We, we learn nothing. Right? It's, you, can, you can tell by maybe the number of tattoos that I have that I've learned quite a bit. <laughs> so uh, there are some other problems with uh, indexed views as well. Um, and there are things that you can't do inside of them uh, that uh, some of them are worse than others. So, you know, uh, common table expressions. Uh, I, I don't really care about common table expressions anyway, so screw it. Um, subqueries. This is an interesting one uh, because, you know, uh, some, some people do have, you know, uh, very pathological issues with subqueries in general. But this, this actually doesn't really um, fully explain uh, just how many limitations this introduces. Uh, you cannot use exists in an index view definition. You, you, you can only use joins. You can only use inner joins. You, you might see if you look down here, there are many other types of uh, relational um, table joining syntaxes that you cannot use, but subqueries actually uh, prevent the use of saying like where exists something in this table that correlates to this other table, which is wild. You cannot put an exists clause in a SQL Server indexed view. Huh, I know. Basic stuff, right? Uh, there's some other things in here. Uh, so this, this one is particularly funny to me. Uh, you can't use distinct, but you can group by every single column. What do we think that is? Hmm. Hmm. What is that? Funny, 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 funny. Um, so derived table expressions. So uh, if you wanted to like put a uh, derived join in your index view, you could not do that. So if you want to say like from select from this thing, join the result of this select to like some base table, uh, you can't do that. Uh, you cannot do self joins, whatever. I don't know, I guess that makes sense. Uh, you cannot use table variables, inline table valued functions, or multi statement table valued functions. Uh, this makes sense, and this makes sense. This does not make a lot of sense. Inline table valued functions are typically very simple things. You can only put like a select in there anyway, so that doesn't make a lot of sense. And then there's some stuff down here that, like, you know, kind of like who cares a little bit, pivot and unpivot, uh, screw you. Table sample, system time, uh, full text search. If you're using full text search in SQL Server, you deserve every ounce of pain that you experience. That is nonsense. Uh, cube roll up, okay, whatever. Uh, you cannot have uh, having in there, uh, which is one, actually one of the problems we're going to solve later. Uh, and these these are interesting ones, I think. Um, union, union all, accept and intersect. Again. Basic relational syntax, Microsoft. What are you doing? What what's happening? Where where's that where's that two hundred and fifty billion a year going? I mean, I know you're burning a lot on AI lately, but index views have been around for a long time. How how about like this much of an improvement? Um, there there was uh, there's something actually. It should be in this page, but I don't see it immediately. Uh, yeah, this is where I was looking. This is what I was looking for. Uh, so uh, you have to use count big. You can't use count. That, that's 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 fine. Um, uh, you can't use average. You have to use count and sum as separate columns. Uh, but I think the big one in here is this. Well, actually, probably this. Um, you, you know, like one of the single most common things that you can, and this is, this is funny for a reason that I'm going to talk, tell, tell you, I'm going to tell you in a minute. Uh, some of the most basic stuff that you would want to aggregate uh, in, in having an index view are min and max. And a long time ago, uh, a guy named uh, decided that 
he, it was not worth maintaining a, a non-clustered index in the indexed view uh, to support min and max. So we don't have that available. That we don't have that option available to us. And uh, you know, like twenty something years later, I don't know if we're ever going to get it. You can use greatest and least in indexed views. Uh, those are newer T SQL syntax from like 2022, where you can put those in index views all day and everyone's like, fine, great. So there's a lot of restrictions on index views that are really annoying. And um, it would be nice if Microsoft invested like a, a little, a fraction of the money that they blow on OpenAI on improving SQL Server just a little bit before, you know, SQL Server slowly turns into COBOL and Fortran and whatever. Uh, but there's a lot of stuff with index views that's you know, missing. Like you can't do it, you can do it anywhere else. So uh, in this video, we're going to talk about uh, index view maintenance because one thing that you do need to consider when you create index views is uh, like, so like under, under like optimal conditions, having an index view shouldn't be any more maintenance for your query than having another non-clustered index on the table or whatever. Uh, but you like, you do have to consider how that index view is assembled. So let's look at this query, right? And I'm going to run this update in the transaction so that we don't actually change all these scores to a, a higher score and have weird results in the future. But if you look at the query plan for this, this, this runs pretty quickly, right? Just a little over half a second. But in, like, I, I know we, this could be better with an index. We just recorded a view on improving uh, sorry, we just recorded a video, not a view, uh, just recorded a video on using indexes to improve the, uh, the, the performance of modification queries. So yes, I know, we, we could make this better, but just stick with me for now. Uh, now we're going to create this uh, view. In this view, I mean, we're updating the post table here, and this view has the post table in it. Now, there are, are plenty of warnings that I should that, that go along with views that reference more than one table, especially around locking and blocking. Uh, serializable isolation levels will kick in when these views need to get maintained, so it really does behoove you to make index view maintenance as quick as possible. So we've got that index view, sorry, we've got that view in place. Now we have to create a unique clustered index on the view in order to get it to be a material, an indexed view, a materialized view, if you prefer that, that parlance, it's fine if you do. <clears throat> so this takes a little 20 seconds or so to complete. Uh, I don't know. Uh, no, look, look, hey, 20 seconds on the nose. Look it, right under my armpit. There it is, 20 seconds. Wonderful. Yeah. It's almost like I've done this before. But now when we go to run this update query, uh, I want, I'll just get the estimated plan real quick to show you that it gets a bit more complicated, doesn't it? And then when we actually run the query, this thing that went, went from finishing in 600 and something milliseconds, well, this is gonna, this is gonna drag on a bit. This is gonna uh, end up being, I don't know, probably around like 12 seconds, 12. Look at that, oh, sorry, look at that, 12, one, two, right there. Look at that, 12 seconds. And the, and, and the query plan explains a bit why. Uh, we have some problems in this query plan, don't we? Uh, index view maintenance, if, you do, if you're not paying close attention, can be quite painful. Uh, we spend about seven seconds scanning the clustered index of the vote ta votes table. SQL Server misunderestimates uh, the, this hash join and this hash aggregate. This adds a fairly significant chunk of time uh, to the query plan. We go from seven seconds there to almost 11 seconds there, and then, uh, well, another second or so there, and then another sorty spilly thing here. So the index you maintenance in this case is kind of gnarly. But uh, if, we, if we were to pay attention to the query plan uh, that SQL Server uh, has there, um, see, th there's actually a missing index request that is helpful for like once ever. SQL Server is like, hey, Psst. If we had an index on this vote on this post ID column in the votes table, I think the index view maintenance would suck less. And and, and SQL Server, uh, for for all its faults, is actually is actually right on this one. We, if we had an index on the post ID column, that index view maintenance would be a lot less terrible. So uh, we created that we that we, this index is there now, and now if we go look at this update. This should only take a couple seconds. And so like this went from being 600 something milliseconds. I mean, like the time did double. Uh, 
which maybe isn't great, but if this index view is quite helpful, and there, look, there's even another, <clears throat> hey, if you create this other index, boy howdy, we can we can speed this up. And of course, this this one is sort of right too because that is that is half the time we spent there. But this is this we knew about, this we this we knew about before, right? We 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 were aware of the situation when we first ran that update. We knew because we watched my other video on improving modification performance with indexes, that if we had an index there, we could make this faster. So uh, if we were to create that index, this thing would take, this thing would be pretty quick all, all in all. Now, uh, index views do need to be created for a good reason because you do introduce this overhead, particularly when that index view references more than one table. Um, you know, it can, uh, again, like really puts in, uh, uh, weird emphasis on locking with the serializable stuff. So you have to be careful there. But uh, index views when properly used and when properly indexed for can be very powerful things. So in the next two videos, we're going to talk about different ways you can use and you can use index views uh, to get around some tricky stuff in SQL Server queries and query plans and uh, some limitations with other fancy indexing features in SQL Server. Uh, so uh, we're going to do that. I'm going to end this one here. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed yourselves. I hope you learned something. And I hope that you will petition Microsoft to uh, make index views not suck, finally. I don't know. So something along those lines. Anyway, thank you for watching.